Hey everyone, uh, I just wanted to do a little video here with uh, concerning problems, printing problems with an Ender 3. This is the V2, I've had it for about a year, and um, recently we had a rash of printing problems. There were some spaghetti issues, um, clogging nozzle issues, all sorts of problems, and it just popped up out of nowhere. So I'm going to talk you through what I did so that maybe you have an idea of a list of things you can do as far as maintenance goes. So the first thing we noticed was we started having some in really inconsistent printing and as you can see here on this print we've got some high and low spots, some waves, and then um, you can see some separation here where the infill um, on the base actually pulled this layer away from the brim that we were using. So um, this is just from today. While it was doing this, while it was failing, I changed the bed level manually while it was moving. And as I did that, you can see where it really improved right here. So today that confirmed what the problem probably was all along in addition to some of the issues we had had before. Now, we hadn't been doing a lot of large prints, but uh, lately we've got this here, and uh, it's on our website. My son designed this. It's a cup holder for a 1978 F-150, and he's selling these things. And so the printer's been running 24 hours a day, which is not really what an Ender 3 is made for. But... Um, Today, the print quality got pretty good. This is actually a fast print, like 0.24, um, but we still have some lifting here on the edges, uh, here and here, and that was part of the problem we were running into was some lifting on the bed. So the first thing that we noticed was, um, in addition to those separation issues, was the clogging nozzle. We kept clogging the nozzle. Now I've done some upgrades to this unit which I talked about in an earlier video but I'm going to show you what I've done really quick just so you know. Um, areas that I've covered that should have helped prevent problems that I've been having. Um, we've got the all metal extruder here and I'll have links to all of this in the description as well. The PTFE tubing uh, by Cap Capricorn, the BL Touch unit for auto bed leveling. So I've tried to make everything as easy as possible for myself without buying a Prusa. Um, also the Octopi with the camera. So, you know, it's pretty well set up. The only thing I haven't done is um, the direct drive um, extruder and an upgraded hot end. It's the only two things I haven't done. And, you know, maybe the dual Z axis. But We've taken care of mostly everything. And then, so the first thing we saw happening along with the clogs were um, a lot of residual plastic here on the nozzles. And some of it was actually coming out above the hot end. And so we had to investigate that. So... If you haven't done these things, I would recommend that you get the Capricorn PTFE tubing or some other brand. Get yourself some some of these cleaning needles for your nozzles and then get an extra pack of nozzles. You, good luck trying to clean a nozzle. I just pull the darn thing out. They're so cheap. Got them listed in the description. Just buy new nozzles for spares, okay? So obviously I regularly do bed leveling. I've got the auto bed level. I've, you know, I, I do it manually with the paper trick, you know, that what you would do if you didn't have the auto bed leveling, um, slipping it underneath the uh, hot end. So I did all that and we were still having issues. So I took the hot end apart, took it all apart. I replaced the, the Bowden tubing and also cleaned the gear off of the extruder um, in case there was too much that had built up and maybe it was slipping. The other thing is this is a glass bed and it's worked really well and I've always just used 90% uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol and a, uh, a clean 
um, cloth to clean it between each print. I do it every time because I don't want to have any problems. I don't use glue sticks or anything like that. So I could kind of rule out that issue. But I went ahead and took the glass bed off, washed it with hot soap and water, and then redid the alcohol thing just to be sure because we were having some lifting problems here as well. Another thing is you have to keep your, uh, your plastic, your filament dry. So every time that um, I put mine away, I put it in a Ziploc bag and I bought some of these um, silica packs, desiccant I guess is what they're called, silica gel, and I, I put it in plastic immediately when I'm done. And that's the way I store my, my filament. So make sure you're doing that. I'll put some links to the packs in the uh, description as well. So I've covered the care of the filament. That's a major issue. You don't want to get it wet. You don't want to get it damp. You've got to keep it dry. Um, another thing that we pondered was perhaps, you know, the ender after a year of heavy use, the bed's not getting hot enough. Maybe there's cool spots. So I used my FLIR device and check the temperature and it turned out that the bed temperature was five degrees lower than what our selected uh, temperature was and you know I'm sure there's a there's a variance but uh, I went ahead and bumped up the temperature on my PLA from 60 to 65 to get it closer to where we want it to adhesion um, also on the extruder I mean the uh, the hot end. I bumped up the temperature a couple degrees. Normally I use 200. I bumped it up to 205. It got stringy, so I brought it back down to 202. And it seems to be really happy today doing that. We've got some really nice um, extrusion going on and layering. And um, and this is actually a point. I think it's a 0.24 or 0.28 layer. Uh, so in this setup, I am using, uh, with the BL Touch, I'm using OctoPrint with the Raspberry Pi setup. Uh, I'm going to show you the bed visualizer, which is what I use. Um, so I can see the high and low spots on the bed. And today I worked on it for a long, long time adjusting. You can see it's almost all green except for a little spot here, which is, which is always there. And I think that has something to do with... Um, not having a dual Z axis set up. So we've got the Z drive over here, um, but there's none over here, and that's the way the Ender 3 is. That's the way it comes. Um, so there, there probably is a little sag as the hot end moves over to the this side of the uh, bed. So using the visualizer, you can see if you click on update mesh now, your BL touch is going to move around the bed and sense high and low spots. If we go over to the settings here on Octoprint to our plugins, we've got the bed visualizer here. And it's not super intuitive, but it does make sense. And this shows a graph of your height variations. Now, down here would be, as you're facing your printer, would be the right rear part of the bed. Up here would be the left rear part of the bed. And then front right, front left, you know, and it's all on Z-axis. So. If you hover over these settings, you'll see where this thing tells you, you know, which, now here, now you can see I've got some upgraded springs here, which I highly recommend. I've got links to those in the description as well. You wanna do the upgrades on this thing because you're not paying a thousand bucks for a Prusa. So you might as well up, update your Ender with things that are useful. Um, all right, so let's go back to the uh, main control panel here. And, um, Take a look here. Also, uh, you've probably already set up your Z um, offset. That should be set. so. Right here, you can see the aux leveling selection. If you push that, um, it's going to auto home. The VL touch will sensor will work on the center, and then it's going to move to um, the four corners, and then the center 
uh, you can select each one for it to do that and then slide the paper under and adjust the spring underneath up or down to uh, set your manual leveling. Uh, so I, I like to do that. We already talked about that with the Octoprint bed visualizer. But then after you've done all that, you want to go over to level and push that. And that will do the automatic bed leveling based on the, the information and data that you had on your bed, um, your bed level program based on this data. And so with that done, the, the printer should be calibrated to do quality prints. Now, so you don't use a bunch of your filament um, doing starting and stopping a print over and over and over again. While you're doing this whole process, I recommend that you go and download some files uh, like this. This is a Ender 3 bed leveling file. And I've opened this up in Prusa Slicer. You can also do it in Cura and convert it from STL to G-code. And it might just come with the G-code. This one I didn't really like because it only heated it up to 195 um, on the nozzle and then 45 on the bed, which is not high enough for what I do. But um, here you can see uh, through the process what it will do. And so it's going to draw a nice line around, a curved line around the edges of the bed, the very far corners, a couple of layers. And then it's going to do circles at each corner. Nice little plates, thin single layer deals. And while it's doing this, you can be over at your printer turning those knobs and adjusting it. So. If these look like they're paper thin, you can see through them, they're too thin. That means that you've got, you don't have enough room between your, your hot end, your nozzle, and the bed. And so you need to create more space there. If you're getting the wavy things, like I showed you over here on this test print, if you're getting this, then you've got too much of a gap and you need to tighten up the distance between the nozzle and your bed. This is actually perfect right here. So if you can get that, that's what you want. So here I've pulled up some photos, some really zoomed in photos of some failed prints uh, to kind of show you what's going on here. Uh, this is a bed adhesion problem. So make sure your bed's clean, make sure that you've got your bed leveled and the distance um, between your hot end and your bed is is proper and that the material is getting squished down and and joining you can kind of see here there's there's a little bit of separation there they're, they're not really squishing out um, and and joining and here's another part that's separated so that means that this hot end was too far away from the bed now if we go back here Okay, that, that one was raising, so make sure the bed's clean, make sure that you've got your bed warm enough and that it's sticking. Uh, this is another view of what I showed you over there with the, uh, the waves. And this is when your hot end is too high from the bed. Same thing here. And this is the same thing, it's not adhering, and this eventually pulls away. So here's a shot of my FLIR uh, heat sensing unit that I put on the iPhone. And uh, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. It's a good tool to have for a lot of things. You can see that the um, center, when I had it set to 60, we had 49.2 degrees and that is not what you want so bump that temperature up just a little bit and there i measured the corner which is 42. you're gonna have some variation because it's not it's the this printer does not have it's not a three thousand dollar printer it's not going to be completely uniform all around the surface so but your edges are really critical because that's where you usually start to print if you're printing larger things and it's too cool out there, you're not gonna get the uh, adhesion that you want. Um, 
So I believe this was when I had it set up to 65 and the best I could do was 52 in the center. So, you know, your glass is going to spread out some of that as well. Okay, so I found a photograph of what I was talking about with that hot end. You can see that filament has actually, when you got the clog, when I got the clog, it backed up through the, the, um, the hot end here and came out in a glob above that area. And right here, you can see when we had the clog that it was actually, the pressure was pushing it out around the threads and um, not only was the nozzle clogged, but the whole thing was full of, of melted filament and it was getting all over here. So this whole thing had to come apart and be cleaned. It was quite a tedious process. So I bought an extra hot end. For these, if you get the stock one, it's only maybe about 30 bucks. They're not that expensive. Might be easier just to replace it. Okay, so finally, um, once you've checked all those things, um, Oh, you know, one more thing I wanted to talk about was checking for warpage on your glass or your bed. You might have a different bed, a metal bed, whatever. You can use a straight edge. I prefer the metal one like you'd use for construction, just a small, small one. Um, the glass beds typically aren't going to be warped like some of the other ones, the flexible ones. But you need to check that. Put a straight edge across both axes and then diagonally and see if there's a gap because if your bed is warped, you're, there's nothing you can do. So that would have to be replaced. So make sure that that's taken care of. That was another issue that I tried. And some people also recommend a glue stick before you print. I don't, I've never had to do that with this glass bed and I hopefully won't ever have to, but I just wanted to do a quick plug for my channel. I've got a bunch of stuff in here. I do a lot of DIY projects, EMP stuff, cars, um, hydroponics, boating, motorcycles, gardening, etc. So please subscribe to the channel and check out all my other videos. I got a bunch of them. Also, our uh, we run a tiny little business here called hotfabs.com and where we design stuff and try to sell our little products. So please give a subscribe and a like if you feel like it. And thanks for watching. Check out the other videos. Have a good one.